Worshipped and feared by thousands, this young girl is a living goddess. The latest in a long line of goddesses or kumaris that goes back centuries. She's confined to the temple and has little contact with the outside world. She can't speak to anyone and her feet must not touch the ground. But puberty is the end of her reign and she must leave the temple. The morning you were worshipped as a goddess and next day it's nothing. For some, the shock is too much and they refuse to leave. It's been 60 years. Doesn't your auntie want to start a mortal life, a normal life? Now campaigners are asking if becoming a goddess is in the best interest of Nepal's children. That leaves a huge mental scar that affects their life forever. This is Patan, one of Nepal's largest cities and a focal point of an ancient and controversial tradition. Tonight is very special. Hundreds of people have gathered in the streets hoping to see someone they believe is holy and can perform miracles. Someone who is both feared and worshipped. This eight-year-old girl is who they've all been waiting for. Revered by thousands, she's considered a living goddess, a Kumari. There are even people waiting for her outside of the temple to give her offerings before she's taken inside. Unika Bajracharya was selected to become a goddess at the age of six, and she will remain one until the day of her first period. She rarely goes out in public. When she does, her feet must not touch the ground in order to preserve her godliness. That's where the rest of the rituals are going to happen tonight, behind closed doors. And she will come out a few hours later. Nepal is a predominantly Hindu country, but with a significant Buddhist population. The two religions have coexisted and intermingled for centuries. They share priests and temples, and they both worship the Kumari. Today is the eighth day of Dasain, a festival in which the goddess Durga is worshipped in her many forms. The Kumari is believed to be a living embodiment of one of those forms. That is the window to the living goddess's room. That's where she's sitting and that's where she gets worshipped and served by everybody. I'm having to wait until she's ready to see me because today she's very, very busy. Maybe because it's one of the biggest Nepalese festivals today. She lives here in the Kumari Palace and receives visitors in this room. She's not allowed to speak to anyone outside of her family as long as she's a living goddess, and that includes me. We're waiting for a lady in her 60s, and she was a Kumari over 50 years ago. I'm very curious to find out how things were for her when she was a living goddess. Oh, I think, I think she's here. Oh, she's here. Hello. Namaste. Namaste. Nice to meet you. I'm Saha. 
Nani Maya Shakya became a Kumari at the age of four and remained one until she was 12 years old. This is a picture of her when she was a Kumari. Here she says she was around five years old. Five years old, you were so young. Did you not miss your parents? Was it not difficult to be away from your parents? As a small child, she was taken away from her parents and brought to live in the Kumari Palace. Though they could visit, they couldn't take her home. So the young Kumari was brought up by priests and caretakers. The role of a living goddess is to protect her city. And the tradition is believed to have started sometime around the 12th century. There are only three official Kumaris in the whole country, and they're all in the Kathmandu Valley. The living goddesses of Patan have always come from the same small Buddhist community of about 115 eligible families. Yeah, it needs all the food. Shanira was a goddess for 10 years, from the age of 5 until she got her periods at the age of 15. Since Kumari is regarded as a goddess, she is not supposed to be called by her name. So she is called Dea Major, that means goddess. And even by your even, mom and even, dad? Even by my mom and dad. And dad had to perform a special offering every day. She has to be kept pure in every way, and she has to be dealt with respect. But the goddesses aren't just respected, they're worshipped. Although Kumaris in the past have been as young as one and a half years old, they're expected to act as a link between the worshippers and the gods. I've heard a lot of prayers, and you know, everyone, they do come with an offering and then just to pray for it. Official people, they would come to come for a job, someone for a visa, flight, for passing an exam, for just prosperity, for success. Do they ever bring alcohol? Because I, I know yeah. that they sometimes... But then, as a child, like, you have to accept these offerings and you have to yeah, yeah. consume a part of it. How was that? When you just just take a sip on your lip and it is not necessary you consume it, it's just it's some showing that you are accepting it. Not you, you are not forced to drink it. Maybe because of the power of goddess, you don't feel dizzy. And I never drank outside of my throne. Like other Kumaris, Shanira's childhood was very different to that of most other children her age. I didn't have friends because uh, people would come and treat me as a goddess. They would just come, bow down and take blessings and then go. So they were not like friends, but I have two younger brothers, so I used to play with them. My brothers were mentally prepared that she's a goddess and you, you, you have to be playing with her consent. And uh, we just play indoor games and not like touching is not allowed. And neither is moving around or laughing or crying or even smiling. The living goddess is expected to sit motionless and expressionless for hours while being worshipped. A challenge for any child, even when daddy is right there. That's why a key criteria for becoming a Kumari is calmness. <laughs> Sidi Ratna is part of the committee tasked with choosing the Kumaris. He's been involved in selecting the last eight. Kumari ke lachan sare the je Kumari sushi gentleman. Wo maza bana mala, wo maza yo mikayo anga chani mutiyo anga mayo anga sampo samra. Atesho wo yo chani chani jigo chal chalan. Atesho wo ke chani chani sasa sawa. When a new Kumari is needed, eligible families are invited to bring their daughters to this very courtyard for a Kumari audition. 
The selected girl is then taken to the royal priest for further inspections before a final decision is made. I remember being carried to the royal priest house and the royal priest's wife were asking something and she was, she was checking me, my hands and everything she was checking me and then she put a tikka on my head that declaring that she is going to be the next Kumari. Becoming a goddess is immediate. The girls' lives change dramatically, and so do their families. Financially, the family gets through with a bit of help from the government, a monthly allowance, rent and some other expenses. Offerings paid by visitors are another source of income. No matter how young the goddesses are, everything they do is seen as significant. My mom tells me that I used to cry a lot, 24 hours a day for four days, continuously weeping, weeping and weeping. She consoled me with uh, the toys and she asked me what's wrong with you. And she thought that uh, because I was stopped from going outside and before I had to follow a lot of rules, that is why she must be crying. She was thinking in that way. But the priest and the devotees, they had already forecasted something bad is going to happen. Something bad did happen. A massacre of the royal family occurred on the 1st of June 2001. Crown Prince Dipendra went on a rampage in the royal palace in Kathmandu, killing his parents, the king and queen, three of his siblings, and several other people. The country was left shocked and traumatized. On the fourth day, I heard that the royal massacre happened, and on that day, I stopped crying. So, uh, so my mom said that she really, you know, forecasted a bad omen. Many Nepalese believe that this prediction was the goddess working through the young girl. Ancient goddess, it's called Ganesha. The former Kumaris rarely get together, but they share a belief that they all had a very special connection to the deity. Since we are like recognized as a goddess, we can feel their prayers, and it's the feeling of the people, faith of the people, that made us so powerful, and the power within us also. But all this comes to a grinding halt, the day a Kumari has her first period. I told my mother and she said that now you're no longer a Kumari. The feeling was a mixture of both curiosity and the sadness. Sadness because I was no longer a goddess and curiosity to join in the new world and how I would be able to cope with the society and all that. As a new goddess arrives, the old one must leave, carried for the last time. Though this former Kumari is probably only about 11 or 12 years old, she must endure a very public ejection. The purity dies away when you experience your periods. 
the way I put it is, you know, where there is God, women with periods can't go there. Be the temples, be the religious practice at the, in their own home, in the kitchen, because in the kitchen, the food is there, and if you, the, a woman with a period touches the food, then the food becomes impure. She has to sit away from the others and then have her food. The Kumari must begin her transformation from holy goddess to mortal teenager. She must learn to make friends, walk around town, and go to school, all for the first time. And adjusting to this fall from grace can be hard. It was uh, suddenly a world turning upside down for me. Like, the morning you were worshipped as a goddess, and next day it's nothing. When I went to the school for the first time, my friends were very curious about my life. Like, they asked me the questions like, do you feel some powers? <laughs> do you find it that um, you find a lot of friends a lot faster because you are an ex-Kumari or...? No, like, my friends were scared of me also. <laughs> scared of you? Yeah, because I was a Kumari and then... <laughs> The teacher used to bring all the friends to my home for the worshipping, and so they were... <laughs> wow, this, it must be so kind of weird because all these people used to come and worship you and you didn't talk to them, did you, obviously, as a yeah. Kumari? And now you're in the same school as them. Yeah. <laughs> I also faced a lot of problems going. Just a two-minute walk was a... It was quite difficult for me. I needed my parents to hold my hands and I felt that the streets were, you know, <laughs> shaking. The tradition of living goddesses is one full of secrets and hidden rituals. And superstition takes root. It's believed that anyone marrying a former Kumari will die within six months. Yet many have married without incident. But there is one rumor that may have some truth to it. This is done in every year in the Indasai after being a Kumari. Oh. The Kumari is taken to the Toliju temple in, in the dark room in front of the uh, buffalo head to, begin, to do some puja. Human rights organizations have been trying for many years to get the practice of living goddesses regulated because they think it can harm young children not able to assert their rights. That is undoubtedly against the rights of these, these little children. I mean, they're just four years old, five years old. I mean, I mean they, they, they've never been, they, they don't know anything about this. I mean, that leaves a huge mental scar that affects their life forever. And maybe that's probably one reason they don't want to talk about it as well. Whatever the reality of their experiences, most former Kumaris only have good things to say, at least publicly. I miss my life so much, being a goddess. You are more above than the normal child in a family, yet you are a renowned person in a society, and a whole world, whole nation know you as a Kumari. You are living a life as a princess or a goddess. What else would you ask for? Yet, Shanira is keen to start a support group for ex-goddesses to help them adjust to the mortal life. I want to do something for the ex-Kumaris, like some counseling to the current Kumari, that how their life would change, and giving them basic trainings like maybe music or arts and also like extra classes of presentations. These former Kumaris have managed to build a good life for themselves. They have an education, jobs, and some are married. But one Kumari has not been able to move on. This Kumari I'm about to meet is very different to the others. She was elected when she was two years old, so almost 60 years. 60 years, so almost all her life yeah. she's been a Kumari. In Patil, we have the rule that Kumari leaves her status when she first menstruates. And in her case, she never had the menstruation. And that is why she remained Kumari. But uh, Kumari is more like a little girl. She preferred to be a little girl. And that is why, uh, due to the government pressure or the pressure from the committee, we had to have another official Kumari. And, uh, but she said that I would be uh, staying within the same rules as per my own wish. And that is why uh, people still believe in her and they do come for praying. It was uh, 
forecasted at the time of her birth. There was a priest and he forecasted that she was going to be the long life Kamari. So maybe it was destined. Doesn't your auntie want to start a mortal life, a normal life? No. Why not? I don't know. That is why she chose to pay Kamari even. She could have left her status when she was officially dismissed. But she chose to live this life. Why why is she so, why is she so keen? Maybe because she still believes that she has the goddess in her. Some human rights organizations worry about the effects years of being a living goddess can have on young girls. They applied to Nepal's Supreme Court to declare the practice child labor. The court declined to do so, but did ask for reforms. Campaigners, however, still assert the girls are denied their rights. So the rights that I'm talking about is basically the right to go to school, to learn with other kids, to grow in, a, in the same manner as other kids, to uh, make sure that if they have a health issue, they have a health problem, they are allowed to go to hospitals, they are allowed to go to uh, medical checkups into the hospitals and, and not that, uh, because in some, in some systems they are not allowed to go to hospitals. The doctors have to come to the Kumari house. But they can do little because neither the community nor the former goddesses themselves are complaining. But this evolution may be overtaken by the demands of modern living. This Kumari tradition is very unique and it is a, a very unique culture and that's why I believe it has to be preserved. But uh, I'm afraid that uh, the candidates who apply for this Kumari tradition is very small number of people. I went to see this uh, selection process and I was very sad to see that only two candidates were appearing. For so only Kumari. two girls yeah. were volunteered by their family yeah. to become Kumaris. Yeah. And how many was there before, like when you were a Kumari or? Uh, I was, there were seven girls. The tradition of goddesses goes back many generations and it does have its admirers. But it seems like fewer and fewer parents are willing to sacrifice their daughter's carefree childhood for the chance to becoming a goddess even if they think it offers a link to the divine. <laughs>